Sandra at the Crafty Hairdresser for Lisa Horton Crafts today. Um, in this video I'm going to show you how I made this really pretty box. Um, it could be for chocolates or whatever, sweeties or um, even a wee bit of jewellery. I'm using the Loops and Bubbles Slimline dies and I'm using the middle part, the intricate, which is the intricate part, and then the outside frame together and I'm taping them together so they don't move. Um, and that's so that they can cut out multiple um, pieces the same size exactly. Um, what I've done is I've actually cut out a panel that's 27 centimetres by 16 centimetres and I'm scoring 4 centimetres in from each edge. And then what I'm going to do, that's for the top actually, and the bottom part of the box um, I just do that ever so slightly smaller so it will be 26.8 centimetres by 15.8 and then I still score it at 4 centimetres in from each edge and what that does is it just lets the bottom portion just be a little bit smaller so that the lid can go on easily. So this is what I'm um, just cutting out. I'm going to do like three white pieces of card the same and then a nice mirrored card stock for the top. And then cutting out a piece of acetate using the medium size frame out of this set. Um, sorry, <laughs> don't even know what I'm doing here. Yeah, sorry. So this is the actual lid portion. So I had just set the the bubble frame on its own in the middle of the what's going to be the top panel. And I'm just cutting out little edges for the the sides of the box just to make it a little bit prettier. So they were actually 17 by 3 centimetres for the two longer edges and then seven centimetres by three centimetres for the shorter edges. And that just still leaves a little border of white round it once it's on. I'm just using my wet glue. You could probably use tape as well, but when I'm doing these kind of projects, especially boxes, I like to make sure that it's quite secure and I feel like using the wet glue um, just gives me that added security. Now I'm just cutting the flaps of the the lid and this is going to let me fold it in on itself to secure it. Now actually what I'll have to do as well is just the bits that fold in I'm going to have to mitre them just ever so slightly. Um, actually sorry I'm getting ahead of myself so using just a little circle die that I've got just to cut out the notches on the side and that makes it easier to lift the, the lid off the box and just sort of reinforcing these folds so that it's a nice crisp edge especially when it's a box you don't want it being um, like rounded or anything it will just make the box really flimsy and probably the bits will just pop off. So yeah, this is a bit what I was talking about. I'm just going to mitre the edges a little bit. And it just makes for a neater finish when it's all um, put together. I'm actually not keen on the like proper shiny mirrored card, but um, that's all that I actually had today. I don't have any of the like the you know like the photo like the gold, but it was more of a matte sort of glittery card, and I like that because it's a wee bit more forgiving. I tend to get glue everywhere or my fingers everywhere when I'm using proper mirrored card, so. It never fails. So this is the bottom portion as well just cutting the the little flaps just on each corner 
and then might are in it as well, like the last one. And then just reinforcing those fold lines. And when you're putting the glue on, you want to make sure you're taking it right to the edge so that it gives a really nice crisp corner. Sharp corner, sorry. And that's the base done. And now I'm just putting the, the lid together as well. And because we've made that just a couple of millimetres bigger, it should um, fit together really nicely. And just making sure that it's properly secured, um, holding it just for a little minute, just to make sure that it stays together and there's not any little bits coming apart. Just putting a little bit extra glue on that edge there. And then, yep, just making sure it all goes together. And it does. Now, I'm just using a little bit of tape for the putting the acetate on, just because the wet glue, as I said, I always get it everywhere, and I don't want it all over the acetate window. So just taking a little bit of the tape off at a time and then I'll put the acetate on and line it up first before I take it off completely. It just gives you a little bit of um, a chance to make sure it's nice and straight and not running skew with. And just putting it on the other side of the panel as well and that'll be for the sorry the other panels to stick onto the lid sorry the nice shiny lid sorry my mind's not worth it today I'm afraid sorry about the glare it was just getting a little bit dull so I had to put the light back on again that's looking really nice. A couple of bits of glue where it shouldn't be but never mind. And now just sticking it on to the rest of the, the white panels that are cut exactly the same and this just gives it a nice, um, makes it nice and firm and reinforced rather than it being flimsy. Anyway I'd just like to say thank you so much for joining me today. Um, Please leave a comment, subscribe if you'd like to see more videos, hit the no notification bell, um, subscribe to Lisa Horton channel as well, it's amazing, she's got so many talented people over there. Um, anyway, thank you so much, bye bye.